So I'm getting ready to do a video and I noticed this. It's a stress crack. Ugh. I'm gonna show you why it happens, how to prevent it, and how to fix it. Caraman, to the nail room. Let's get started. Isn't that ugly? So that is called a stress crack. And how that happens is it's being stressed. So the nail is being stressed this way, not this way so much, if it's squished this way, like squishing this way, it will sometimes cause a line down this way, which is not very common. Isn't that ugly? You get stress cracks from just being too busy, just putting stress on it. Thumbs are pretty busy, so they can be like in seat belts, cleaning around bathroom sinks, all sorts of things can cause problems with it. So it begins with a little hairline crack across here. And eventually this little chunk just came right out of there. See how bad it is underneath. And you can see the natural nail is even kind of pulling away even from more of it. So it looks like the lift goes back even further. Usually this doesn't happen, but clearly I did something with this that put a little too much stress on it, didn't like it, and something had to give. It's either my finger thumb is gonna bend and break or the fingernail is going to give, which is a good thing that did. There's also something else you may not be aware of. Natural nails, as they grow, because they don't stop ever growing, no matter what you have on top, as they grow, they tend to curl. Not all, and some more than others. So this may be pulling away because my natural nail is actually curling as it grows. Now you can see it's grown out for about two or three weeks. That's about a two or three week growth for me. So this used to be down here, and this thicker area was down here a little bit. Now it's grown up a little bit. So it could be that it's just not thick enough in here for whatever I was doing or whatever I was doing was just too much for this nail in particular. So how are we gonna fix it? Well, it's actually an easy fix. You wanna get yourself, if we're gonna do it with an e-file, I'll show you both ways actually, because one is a little easier. E e-files are always easier and I'm going to literally take my e-file if you can just see where I'm going to apply it one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get a pair of nippers and start nipping it up that I don't want to do because I take a chance of pulling it off of my natural nail but with the and it's a little awkward because I'm doing myself so you just want to place the e-file on the actual lifted area edges okay so I'm literally just popping the e-file and see how I'm just sort of pulsing it? I'm pulsing it and I'm going to attack that particular area. I'm gonna point right this in here. I'm attacking that spot there. And I'm literally just pulsing it and getting rid of that stress crack and any lifted area that might be right under there. And if it's kind of making a funny sound, you hear it'll sound different when you're filing it, as opposed to what's lifted and what's on the nail will sound a little bit different. So if it sounds kind of hollow, that's all lifted. So see what you want to do? You just want to file away any lifted and ugly area. And if you're doing this with a hand file, it's much the same and you just wanna file over top of the whole area until all the lifted stuff gets so thin, it just flakes off. You don't even have to take it off, pry it off or anything. You just keep filing it down, filing it down more and more and more, and it'll get so thin, it literally just files off. And I will do this with my coarse bit, my, my coarse file. <laughs> See how I'm just filing that one spot? Let me just get rid of some dust to show you exactly the area that I'm targeting. And I will use this finger to hold this skin on this finger and pull it right back. If I'm holding someone else's finger, I'll pull the skin back with my finger. If it's my finger, I'm using my index finger to pull the skin back right here because this is the area I'm focusing on. So I can see it's it's a little bit of an edge here, but it's not really lifted because there's nothing under, there's no natural nail underneath there. So I think I've taken it as far back as all the way as it's actually lifted. Sometimes you'll be surprised if you get a little crack like that and you start filing it. 
it may be half the nail that's lifted. And you really want to go back as far as all the lift is. Okay, so then I'll look at the whole nail because I am going to patch that one spot. But I'll also check and see if this is a person that just came in or if this is for yourself and you haven't grown away hardly at all, you can just fix the patch area. But if there is a little bit of a fill area to do, when you fill this, you can fill that as well. But I'll do it in two different pieces so we can cover both of that. But to prep the nail, I still will file over top of the whole nail because this nail is looking kind of junky. I had a bunch of different colors. This is basically sort of a um, soft pastel green color fade ombre, you might say. But I'm going to go over top of the whole thing to clean it up completely. Again, holding my finger back so I can go down the side here. There's still a little bit of gel polish. Whenever I see a crack like that, I'll always double check the other side because sometimes if the stress crack is really bad, it sometimes can be the same on the opposite side of the finger. That side can be cracked too. And if eventually that crack gets more and more, if you don't attend to it, it's bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually the whole thing will just break right off. So I'm just gonna go over top of the whole thing with my mandrel. Push my cuticle back with that mandrel. Okay, you want to get rid of all of the dust. And even though you're not doing a complete nail over again, anytime the natural nail is exposed, always use your prep and a bonder. The reason why this is awkward is because it's my opposite hand. And just as a reminder, your primer or bond is only meant for the natural nail. Okay, I'm grab a brush. Okay, so I'm going to build this in a white so you can see exactly where I'm putting it down in both areas and how much actually we're putting on that nail. Just get a nice soft white here. I'm doing it with my opposite hand, so bear with me. <laughs> it's a little bit harder to do. So this is what I call um, my color zones. Every time I build a nail, it's harder to see because usually we're doing it in one color or we're doing it in um, a nude tone. So it's really hard to see. So I've got this color zone technique that you can see. I just did a video on it actually. Trying to avoid the one bead. That's too big. Trying to avoid the one bead technique so we can uh, see exactly where the beads are going. So I'm just gonna get a small bead now. So I'm gonna place it right in the spot that I need it. I'm gonna have to move this pad over here now. Forgot it was completely the opposite hand. Okay, so I am going to press clean my brush. I clean my brush a lot. Here's a really great tip. It's much easier to sculpt your beads with a dry brush than if your brush is wet. So every time you're sculpting and you're on the nail and you're sculpting it with your brush, dab off onto a paper towel because every time you touch the bead, you're adding product monomer to your brush, making it more sticky. See, you can see exactly where I put that patch in. Look at that guy. That's exactly where that problem was, right there. So now we're gonna fill the cuticle area. Okay, so I'm gonna get a cuticle bead. I'm gonna place it on there. It's a bit big. Just reduce it a little. Oh, actually, I was gonna use a different color. Whenever you're not happy with something, this is what you do. Take it off immediately. It's harder to do with the opposite hand, but you can do it. I was going to use the pink for the um, cuticle color so they don't blend together so much so you can't see the two different patches. Plus, I really don't want um, white on my cuticle without a clear layer down first. Okay, so let's do that again. Let's grab that bead. Okay, I'm gonna grab a nice cuticle bead, place that in the cuticle area, and I'm immediately drying my brush. 
This is harder for me because it is my office at hand. But the idea is to blend this. This is just filling the nail. Just blending it with the rest of the nail. And that's working with a dry brush. So much easier. If your brush is kind of sticky and your product is kind of jumping up back up into the brush, it's because there's too much monomer or product in your brush. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'll check the whole thing now. I did want this to blend nice and that actually does blend pretty good. Just to be sure, because I did have a bit of a stress crack, so clearly I'm doing something to stress it. I'm just going to make it a tiny bit thicker. Now, of course, in the videos, these beads look giant, <laughs> but they are actually not. So I am going to blend this right in there and make sure. Yeah, that looks good. So now I do think about the other side. I think, hmm. You know, could that blow too a little? So I am going to add just a safety bead on the other side because whatever this client is doing, it might be stressing it out a little. So I'm just going to add that little bead there just to give it some extra insurance. Just to reinforce it just a little bit. Okay, so let's just file it up and get some color on it and we'll see that it's all back to normal. Okay. Okay, so getting a look at this now, and I'll have a picture for you too. So you can see the color zones. The white area is where I did the side patch and the cuticle is very pink, but it's completely smooth. I'm gonna show you the next photo, how smooth it is with the coat of gel on it and it's completely finished, how smooth that looks. That's a complete patch, nice and smooth. So that's a quick fix for the stress crack. Forget the one bead method. Check this video out to do it in color zones. It'll make your acrylic life way easier.